Hey guys, this is Ackle from Tesseract. Um, we're in Melbourne at the moment, I'm pretty jet lagged, but I'm gonna go through some of my guitars. Um, my main one <coughs> is the Mayonnaise AK1. It's a baritone 27 inch scale, and it's made of ashwood, uh, the body. I can never remember what the neck's made of, but um, you know, it looks great though at the back. Uh, it's a, uh, it's not a, what's it called? Bolt on, that's the word I'm looking for. It's a bolt on neck. And we've got a uh, bare knuckle black hawks in both the neck and the bridge. And I've also got piezo pickups uh, hooked up here for the sort of Milton Cleans kind of clean tone, the sparkly glassy sound. And I can flick between that on and off. There's also a blend control between the piezo and the normal pickups. I've also got coil tap built in uh, with this one. And that's just on that pickup. I don't have it on this one. So I can easily flick between the two for certain songs. Um, and it's pretty much the same with this one. It's, this is just slightly different. Well, I think, to be fair, the only difference is uh, the paint job, really. Same pickups, no piezos on this one, just a uh, cool tap on there, and again, normal bridge pickup there. Uh, exactly the same setup, um, but this is in B flat, whereas that one's in A. Um, and running straight into the Kempers. Um, we used to use Axe Fix Ultras. Uh, we kind of never got into the XFX2, but just went from the Ultras straight into these. These are just, there's no faffing around with these compared to the XFXs. The XFXs are great, but there's something about these, there's less options, less parameters, so I found it quicker to get a good tone, just, you know, quickly, a usable good tone. So yeah, I'm really liking these, the Kempers as well. And that pretty much sums it up, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I have a very a uh, cool relationship with Dark Glass, guys from Finland, um, Doug, wonderful guy has been, well, we've been talking for years about stuff and so and all, half of my board at the moment is Dark Glass. So I will come straight in standard tuner TU3, possibly. Yep, yes, I three. forget that's a TU3 and then run straight into this MXR 10 band EQ, which is fine. It's a great thing, standard workhorse. It's an 18 volt monster for some reason. So it is definitely, you, you've got to be careful with it. You can really do some damage, but it's a fantastic thing for just, when you've, you're on stage, you're moving around, perhaps you don't want to do the tone sculpting with the controlled, on board and you'd rather have something like that that's essentially what i do i'm just touching things here and there for one of my bases and not the other that will run straight into this alpha omega which is just brutal thing that one of uh, your aussie countrymen designed in collaboration with doug in fact so that's uh, the guy from that's john stockman from carnival uh, went through and worked on that for about three, we three years, I think it was. Fantastic. So yeah, I, I used to use the ubiquitous uh, B7K, but I found that for specifically for saturation, this is a fantastic pedal. The supersymmetry is the compressor that I'm using at the moment. I do actually have the hyperluminal pedal that's just come out, but I had like 10 hours with it before Wait, this tour. Line, yeah. So I thought, no, I'm gonna stick with a supersymmetry. The Hyperluminum does pretty much have this pedal within it. So I'm looking forward to seeing what other options I've got. Maybe I haven't checked out if it's possible to switch between models whilst performing. Probably not. Although the fact that it does have touch controls could be quite good because I don't wear shoes on stage so perhaps my toes could actually do that we'll see we'll see how it goes that then goes into the vintage ultra which is a fairly new addition to my rig because I used to have a u5 uh, Avalon u5 as my di uh -huh. I was finding that I wanted to travel quite lightly and this this was pretty close. It's, uh, it's, it's almost as finessed as the U5 and almost as clean as the U5. The U5 basically shows you who you are as a musician. 
doesn't hide anything. It strips away all the fluff. Takes no prisoners. Uh, yes, that's the thing. <laughs> this is very close to that, in fact. So I'm pretty happy that I can now just have this instead of going with a couple of rack units because this is much easier to fly with. Mm -hmm. uh, standard ISO brick. I have seen recently a company's released a ISO, what do they call it? It's basically battery packs, which I'm really interested in. So it's a rechargeable version of this. It scoots out all the noise. Like really? Just essentially, tonight's a really good venue, but some venues are not so nice. You did that ground hum? Yeah, even if it's all on three, three, phase, three phase circuits, sometimes lights like these things, especially anything with a motor, mm -hmm. you will pick it up. It's crazy, especially when you're using, let's move over to this job, uh, especially when you're using pickups like this. So open pole, this picks up radio sometimes, things like that. But I love the characteristic of it. So I've been working with these Music Man style pickups for years, essentially. So this is my signature Kiesel Headless AW5 Vader. It's a long title, I appreciate that. But uh, for sure, AW5, that's what you can see on their website. All we have, Swamp Ash, Maple Neck, three-piece Maple Neck. My bad, he made me a five-piece with this one. So this is a five-ply Maple Neck. And then just some Burl on top as a short piece. You can see there, it's just tiny bit of a tone wood but more aesthetic than anything and then a wonderful flamed maple fretboard which I'm pretty much gonna try and get on all my bases. Where did the um, headless come from? That was just Jeff at Kiesel going nobody's done this for 20 years I'm gonna do this and then for some reason everybody started doing it and, and for you? For me mm. I suffer from as a form an injury across this part of my sternum where I tore the muscles along there when I was younger oh. and some days it's just hell sure. some days it's fine and may even be fibromyalgia we'll find out who knows as I get older it's going to get worse but this enables me enables me to play bass with about six pounds on me seven pounds so what's that you know that's only coming in like four kilos i think it's yeah. it's a pretty damn light thing yeah. and it's still got that chunk to it so i went to his factory and felt really good when i tried it for a few weeks and thought okay let's see how this goes and yeah we carried on speaking and then that's how we led to going with the, the headless and i i think there's some wonderful headless bases out there uh but Jeff is doing something fun and he's, he's a, it's a great community there and he's building, especially around the tech community, he's trying to build a family there and it's really nice working with people that are happy and fun and that's why I work with Doug at Dark, Dark Glass as well because the guys just uplifting and positive and work, really moving forward constantly. I think both companies are doing something, uh, it's like acknowledging where it all came from. Yeah, but yeah. But then with their modern appointments. Yes, very much so. And then this is just a four string multi-scale. Uh, I really just wanted to try and see if, because we've got quite a bridge sometimes between these two tunings. You'll have this is an F and then this will go down to A flat. Okay. And that, that's quite a jump. So I wanted to see if, if having that, just that extra bit is gonna give me a much a more, more defined, yes, definitely a bit more tension, um, but more defined tuning, especially down here and obviously there. But yeah, so again, this is just Swamp Ash, no top wood. And then you got the FNA style jazz man thing that Warwick used to do. Uh, they probably still do in fact. And yeah, this, it's got a wonderful chunk to it. Uh, it's, again, this is, yeah, this is a five ply as well. Uh, maple neck. It, this was before I discovered that I really liked the maple fretboard as well. So, um, but yeah, any future versions of this, I'm probably gonna go with the maple fretboard as well. It's interesting to see you playing four string. 
Yeah, well, I don't need five for the couple of tracks that this is involved in. Yeah. And it made me realize that there's a lot of wastage in the world and I don't want to be a part of that anymore. I so. saw an interview with you talking about your old Warwick base. Yeah. And the, the decision that there was no longer a necessarily economical base to use. No, and also both of those bases were not, what's the right word? Uh, they're not forest. I forget the name of it now. Yeah, the Avangno was uh, on that base was very much the whole thing was you can't they won't produce them anymore because the wood isn't uh, certified anymore. So that that made me sort of think I I, I don't need to have this. You know, I'd rather work with something somewhat more sustainable if I'm gonna also be working with a company that's trying to sell them with my name on. Sure. I pretty much happy that they're only exclusively looking at sustainable stuff and yeah. even the exotic woods are sustainable like the koa I was surprised to find that that's sustainable even though it's only coming from Hawaii but I think it only takes a few years to grow back which is yes. quite something you know that's you do I think lose some tone I'll be honest especially with the Avangno stuff but I'm happy to sacrifice that it's uh, I'd be yeah, I, I wouldn't feel too comfortable with myself if I'm, if I'm out there trying to live a better life and walking around with these things that are essentially taking up quite a lot of resources in their production. So it's, it's a small sacrifice. It's hardly, it's hardly a, a big thing to no, change, you know, because there's, there's so much that we can do now to balance that out. And yeah, well, we don't use cabs, so we have these in-ear things and again they're sufficient that's i think it's all about treading lightly nowadays and practicality yes very much so yeah especially flying in and spending like a few days in one country and then flying back out again you've you've got to be as light as possible i think and spend as little time faffing around of course yeah. well, thank you so much pleasure man thanks for talking to awesome. me